hands of Jambudweef offer prayers. So, because it's, in, it's not a chanting Sanskrit meter, we'll do it in uh, little small re, uh, responses. So, if you can just repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Tejas Tejase Avir Avir Bhava Rajanaka Rajadamsra Karmasayan Radaya Radaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Abayam Abayam Atmani Bhuyasta Om Sham hmm. Let's see. Do you all have it written somewhere on your phones or somewhere? Five eighteen eight. Mm -hmm. It's nice if we do, can all chant this verse. It's so beautiful. Five eighteen eight. So um, we'll do it in larger groups of words. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasringha Namas Tejas Tejase Avir Avir Bhava Vrajanaka Drajadamstra Karmasayam Radhana Radhaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Abayam Amayam Atmani Bhuyasta Om Shram Now I'll do the whole thing and then you can all do it whole each you follow Om Namo Bhagavate Narasringha Namas Teja Teja Se Avir Avibhava Rajanaka, Rajadamstra, Kamasayam, Radaya, Radaya, Tamo, Grasa, Grasa, Om Swaha, Abayam, Abayam, Atmani, Bhuyasta, Om Shram. Okay, word for word. Om, O Lord, Namaha, my respectful obeisances, Bhagavate, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narasimhaya, known as Lord Nasimha, Namaha, obeisances, Teja Teja say, the power of all power. Avir Avir Bhava, please be fully manifest. Rajanaka, O oh, you who possess nails like thunderbolt. Rajadamstra, Oh, you who possess teeth like thunderbolts. Karma asayam. Demoniac desires to be happy by material activities. Radaya radaya. Kindly vanquish. Tama. 
ignorance in the material world. Grasa, kindly drive away. Grasa, kindly drive away. Om, O oh my Lord. Swaha, respectful oblations. Abayam, fearlessness. Abayam, fearlessness. Atmani, in my mind. Bhuyasta, may you appear. Om, O Lord. Shram, the beads or seed of mantras offering prayers to Lord Nishringadev. Translation, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Nishringadev, the source of all power. O my Lord, who possesses nails and teeth just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our deeming-like desires for food of activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance so that by your mercy we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in the material world. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In Srimad Bhagavatam 4.22.39, Sanat Kumar speaks the following words to Maharaj Prithu. Yat pada pankaja pala sivila sabakyam karma sayam grahitam ugratatyanti santaha tavana rikta matayo yatayo pirudham srotaganastamaranam bajabasudevam. Devotees always engage in the service of the toes of the Lord's lotus feet can very easily become free from the hard-knotted desires for fruit of activities. Because this is very difficult, the non-devotees, the jnanis and yogis, cannot stop the waves of sense gratification, although they try to do so. Therefore, you are advised to engage in devotional service of Krishna, the son of Vasudeva. <clears throat> Every living being within the material world has a strong desire to enjoy matter to its fullest satisfaction. For this purpose, the conditioned soul must, to his uh, conditioned soul, must accept the body one after another, and thus his strongly fixed fruit of desires continue. One cannot stop the repetition of birth and death without being completely desireless. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami describes poor pure bhakti devotional service as follows. Ayabila sita sunyam jnana karma nyanavritam anukulena krishna silanam bhaktir uttamam. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruit of activities or philosophical speculation, that is called pure devotional service. Unless one is completely free from all material desires, which are caused by the dense darkness of ignorance, one cannot fully engage in the devotional service of the Lord. Therefore, we should always offer our prayers to Lord Nishringadev, who killed Harani Kashipu, personification of material desire. Hiranya means gold and Kashipu means a soft cushion or bed. Materialistic persons always desire to make a body comfortable and for this they require huge amounts of gold. Thus Hirani Kashipu was the perfect representative of the material li materialistic life. He was therefore the cause of great disturbances to the topmost devotee, Prahlad Maharaj, until Lord Nishringadev killed him. Any, dev any devotee aspiring to be free from desire, material desires should offer his respectful pray prayers to Nishringadev, as Maharaj did in this verse. Mm -hmm. I'll read that again. Prahlad, any devotee Aspiring to be free of material desires should offer his respectful prayers to Lord Nishringadev as Prahlad Maharaj did in this verse. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya 
Chaksu unmilitam yena tas my Sri Guru Vena Maha. Sri Chaitanya Manobistam stapti tam yena butale. So I am Rupa Kadamayam the Danti Swampadantikam. Bande hum shiguro shiuta padakamalam shigurun baishnavam scha. Si rupam sagrajatam sahaganat raganatam vitam tam sajivam. Sadvaitam saradutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam. Sri radha krishna padam sahaganat lalita. Sri vishakam vitam scha. Hey krishna karuna sindhu dinabandhu jagatpate. Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swari Vrishavan Uti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhisya Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine. Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya Desatare. Sri Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, Jai Jai Sri Nishringa, Palada Desha, Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringam, Ugram Virya Mahavishnu, Jvalantam Sarvato Mukham Nishringa Vishinam Badram, Mitya Mityam Namami Aham. Bhagishya Yasya Badane, Lakshmir Yasya Sivaksasi, Yasya Tam Riddayam Samvit, Tam Nishringa Aham Bhaje. So, <laughs> this is Prahlad Maharaj giving this beautiful prayer in glorification of Lord Nishringadev. And he's teaching us through this prayer how, and as Srila Prabhupada emphasizes, how one can become free from all material desires. <laughs> Rani Kashipu is a factual personality who appeared many, many millions of years ago. This particular pastime, I believe, happened in the uh, Treta Yuga. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It was right at the end of the Satya Yuga and the beginning of the Treta Yuga, um, at least two million years ago. Um, <clears throat> And here, what we're hearing is that uh, Lord Nishringadev, he uproots the Harani Kashi Poos that we have in our own heart. Material desires are like little tiny Harani Kashi Poos running around in our heart and our mind. <laughs> so sometimes we are harassed by these material desires. Sometimes these material desires look like they're very nice just like Harani Kashipu can look very nice to some people. But these material desires just cause the living entity to unnecessarily struggle hard in this material world just to find some satisfaction which is easily available through the devotional service of the Lord. So here, this uh, verse is kind of praying to the Lord. One of the things that we have to understand from this verse is that we, we are powerless to overcome our own material desires. We can make an effort to um, get rid of material desires, to avoid material desires, but we can't become fully purified until we get the mercy of the Lord. So the devotees make the effort and they also render render service by rendering nice prayers to the Lord. The poor of the Lord is all powerful, and the head says here, uh, by he, the Lord has what we call very powerful nails 
and teeth. And Lord Nishringadev's nails and his teeth are like, as compared to thunderbolts here. A thunderbolt, if it hits a tree, immediately the tree is finished. It destroys it. If it hits a house, the house is on fire. Uh, if it hits a human being, there's nothing. You can't even find any part of him left. <laughs> there have been people been hit by thunderbolts. Sometimes we call them lightning bolts. Thunderbolts, same thing. <laughs> uh, so these are very powerful forces. And... Uh, so his tear, his nails and his teeth can uproot any demon-like material desires. Material desires go deep. Um, they say as you practice Krishna consciousness, the more you practice, the more you start to see how, how many material desires you actually have. We should see that sometimes we see when a person becomes new in Krishna consciousness, and they start performing activities in devotional service. And then they uh, become a little enthusiastic and become regulated in their practice. And they start thinking, wow, I'm almost a pure devotee. Maybe I am a pure devotee. <laughs> we used to call this in our early days of Krishna consciousness, we would call this pure devotee syndrome. <laughs> Which means this is kind of a disease where one starts to think, well, you know, I've been in this movement for a year now and I'm chanting and I'm working hard and I'm reading the books and I'm dancing in kirtan and I'm eating prasadam and I'm, boy, I have to be a pure devotee, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> but <laughs> we find that if they stay continuous, they start to realize something else after a while. That it's not like that. <laughs> That material desires are, are so deeply rooted in the in the consciousness of the material materialistic living entity that one can't even recognize them. <laughs> they become so deep that one can't even recognize us. Other those other people can recognize them, but we don't even recognize them. <clears throat> so. Therefore, the process of devotional service is a continual process of purifying the heart and awakening one's attraction for Krishna and devotional service. We can understand that when we are spontaneously attracted to Krishna and devotional service 24 hours a day, then we can say we're, we're getting close to purification. If that is not spontaneous, spontaneous means just like you see, when maybe when you were kids, you played with magnets. You know what a magnet is, mm -hmm. and what what a, what does a magnet do? It attracts anything that's got metallic substance to it. So, if you put a little metal piece of something near the magnet, then whoosh, that piece will automatically, without any effort, choom, go right to the magnet and stick to it. So that's an interesting little concept. The, the magnetic pull of a, of a particular piece of iron. So in the same way that when we are spontaneously attracted to Krishna in that same way, when there's not even any, any efforts to be attracted to Krishna, it happens automatically. Then we can say we're becoming a little bit purified. But here, the devotee is being instructed to always pray for the mercy of the Lord. And here it says that these de demon, demoniac desires are like fruit of activity. Fruit of activity is the principle of the mode of passion. But the mode of passion and the mode of ignorance govern the activities of all the conditioned souls in the material world. And what is those activities? That everyone performs some kind of work or activity in order to get something from it. There's always a, a mood, there's always an idea for personal gain in whatever one does. By doing this, I will get something. Mm -hmm. And fruit of activities are either immediate or extended. Immediate is I do something and I'm expecting something to happen right away. Extended means I do something now and in the future I will get something from this activity I do now. For instance, if you just like if you have a job and you go to work, 
and then you work the whole week, but you don't get paid every day, you get paid at the end of the week. So that's extended fruit of activity. It comes at a certain point. Immediate means, means I do something now and I want something immediately. So fruit of activities govern the whole process of materialistic life. And everyone is attracted to engage in materialistic fruit of activities with a desire for material comforts, material sense gratification, material gain like that. But here it's compared to a Harani Kashipu. What was Harani Kashipu? He was so powerful. Material desires are also very powerful. <laughs> he was so powerful that no one could somehow or other stop him. He had received a benediction that he could not be killed in every possible way he could think of. He wasn't, wasn't able to be killed in the day or the night, on land, sea, or air, by any, by any man or animal, by any weapon, by in the daytime or in the nighttime. He had thought of every possible way that death could come. And then he, after performing some tremendous austerities, if you read in the beginning of the seventh canto, the austerities that Harani Kashipu performed, no one could do it. Nobody. It's impossible. He was standing on his tippy toes with his, you know, his toes on the ground, his heels up, his arms stretched straight up into the sky. And in that position, he stayed for 100 celestial years. So much so that uh, a group of ants built an anthill around his body. He didn't move. And the ants were eating his body. Still, he didn't change. He still, he stayed there. His body was like a skeleton. There was no flesh left. But Harani Kashipu knew the yoga system. He was a yogi, a great yogi. So he knew how to keep his life heirs moving throughout his system without losing his life. Because when the life heir goes, that's when you die. And then the soul has nothing to balance itself on, so the soul leaves like that. The life heir keeps the body alive like that. <clears throat> and so he was able to do that and perform these austerities and praying for praying to Lord Brahma. He was thinking Lord Brahma was the supreme person. Brahma is the supreme in the universe, but he's not the supreme person. He was mistakenly thinking Lord Brahma was the actual, you know, deity that we worship for everything. He prayed so much to Brahma and he stayed in that position. Finally, Brahma came. And then when he saw Brahma, he offered his respects in his mind. Brahma took out his kamandalu pot, which was his water pot. He sprinkled water on the skeleton of Arani Kashipu. And as soon as that happened, his body became, again came back. And he had a very powerful, invincible, steel-like body. <laughs> he offered prayers to Brahma. And Brahma said, Arani Kashipu, you have performed austerities like no one else can perform ever before and ever will in the future. So whatever you want, just ask and we will give you some benediction. Immediately he said, I want to become immortal. Of course, the soul is immortal, but the body is never immortal. The body is mortal and therefore it's subject to the element of time. But he was asking for mortal, immortality within the body. Brahma said, even I don't have that. <laughs> Brahma lives for uh, 155 trillion, 40 billion years, earth years. 155 trillion, 40 billion earth years. That's the life. That's 100 years of Brahma according to Brahma's calculation of time. And Brahma told him, 
I don't have that power. I can't give you immortality because I don't have immortality. So Rani Kashipu was very calculable and he was thinking, oh, all right. So he thought different ways by which he could avoid death. And um, he said, you know, land, air, animals, time. And he came up with every possible way you could die. And Brahma said, tatastu, tatastu. In other words, he gave him the benedictions. So after he received all these benedictions, thinking that he thought of all, all the ways that death could come, he, uh, he exclaimed, I am immortal. Then he went out to conquer the universe. He had a grudge against Lord Vishnu, because Lord Vishnu, in the form of Rahadev, had killed his brother, Ranyaksha. And so he was wanted to get vengeance to Lord Vishnu. But he couldn't find Vishnu anywhere. <laughs> so he subjected or subjugated all the demigods, including uh, um, all the powerful demigods became, except Brahma, Shiva, and Narada. That was the only three he couldn't subject, Brahma, Shiva, and Narada. Of course, he worshipped Brahma, and she was more powerful than Brahma. And Narada, uh, Narada is the sage among the demigods, so he he's a pure devotee. Although he is, uh, he's called Devarish. He is the pure devotee demigod. He's sometimes the demigod, but he is actually a manifestation of the energy of uh, Narayan. So he's both a demigod and an energy. He appeared in uh, Gorlila as Srivas Thakur, very powerful demigod, but also an energy of the Lord. So he subjugated all the demigods, and all the demigods were completely afraid of him. And he was so powerful that whatever he wanted, he came in and conquered Inger, Inder's kingdom. Inger, Inger had to run away from his kingdom. He had no kingdom. And he was just just so, what we say, vicious, trying to kill as much as he could. And uh, he was ruthless, but he really wanted to get Vishnu. But Vishnu, he said, where is Vishnu? I can't find Vishnu. <laughs> he was looking everywhere. He couldn't find Vishnu. He said, he must be hi hiding in the hearts of all living entities. Therefore, I can't find him. So, so Prabhupada sometimes makes this statement that the the demons, they want to kill God. <laughs> so they try to kill God, but they can't do it. So they try to kill God by killing the devotees of God or killing the propaganda that supports glorification of God by putting out anti-God anti propaganda. So in that way, they try to destroy God by uh, by through propaganda, atheistic propaganda like that. Atheism is very strong in the world today. It's becoming stronger and stronger also. So, yeah. So these demon-like desires are also like Hirani Kashipu. They're so powerful that we can't get rid of our de these, uh, these material desires. It's not possible. But if we worship the Lord in devotion, by serving the Lord in that mood of devotion, and especially chanting the glories of the Lord, and especially chanting his holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then here, as Prahlad Maharaj plays, that the Lord who situates himself within the hearts of all living entity will uproot those material desires that are situated in the heart and make the devotee free. It is mentioned that Lord Nishringadev, he serves his devotees in three ways. He likes to serve the devotees. You can see the beautiful picture of after Harani Kashipu was killed, Prahlad Maharaj was sitting on the lap of Lord Nishringadev, 
And the Lord was very affectionate to his devotee. So the Shringadeva is very affectionate to the devotees. He's very inclined to the devotees. And he protects the devotees. So he gives three benedictions. And this is mentioned by Bhakti Vinod Thakur in one prayer. That he, pre he gives three ways that he protects the devotees. One, he uproots material desires. Two, he protects against material dangers. Sometimes we see, um, uh, I can tell you one story. Of course, there's, there's hundreds of stories, but this one story I remember where one devotee was distributing books in the area of uh, Israel. And this was many, many, many decades ago. Uh, and there's still the war was still going on between um, Israel and the, what was it? The Palestinian, Palestine, Palestine and Israel there on the Gaza Strip there. So he was distributing books in that area. So one day after finishing his book distribution, he decided to stop a little early and he just went up on the mountain. It was a mountain that was overlooking the city. So he sat on the mountain, he was seeing the whole city from this mountain. And he could see one area of the city was destroyed by the war. There was so much buildings that were all broken and bombed out. So he noticed that one part. So the day ended, the next day he goes out and he's got, he's distributing again. And the devotee was carrying about five, six, seven different titles. In other words, he wasn't just carrying one kind of book. He had many books. So he's distributed and one man, he approached and the man became really interested. So the man was saying, wow, these books are just so wonderful. I'd like to get a copy of every title you have, but I don't have enough money to pay for all of them now. So if you come with me to my home, I'll give you much more than the books are worth. So the devotee was thinking, yeah, why not? It's the end of the day, and this man seems very sincere. So they were walking. So the man was talking, talking while they were walking, and the man was really talking. He kept talking nonstop. And then the devotee was, was listening, listening, listening. And they were just walking. And so the devotee wasn't paying so much attention to where they were going. He was just following the man. So finally, they came to that area where the devotee had saw the day before, the bombed out area of the city. There was no buildings, no people there. And then all of a sudden the devotee realized that this man was not a very serious person. As soon as he thought like that, the man pulled out a knife and was about to kill him. And so the devotee yelled in the top of his lungs, in the Shringadev. As soon as that happened, from nowhere, nobody could understand where that came from. A big dog just happened to be there, big dog, and jumped right on the man who was holding the knife and knocked the man down. And then the devotee got away. <laughs> so, so he called Lord Nishringadev and this big dog came and just knocked the guy down. <laughs> Uh, Indra Maharaj tells another story where there was this young girl. This was in the area of, I'm not sure where, I think somewhere like Russia or Ukraine or somewhere in that area. So uh, uh, he had known this little girl when, practically when she was a very little girl. Now she was about 11 years old. So she came along with her mother to meet Maharaj. And so she was talking to Maharaj and she, she said, I saw Lord Nishingadev. And Maharaj was thinking, yeah, we all see Lord Nishingadev. We have pictures, we have deities. You know. 
And she kept, but she kept understanding that Maharaj doesn't understand what I'm saying. I saw Lord Nishringadev. And then her mother said, yes, she did. And then she told the story. When she was about eight years old, which was about three years ago, she was walking across the street and she was not looking where she was going and a car came. The car was coming pretty fast. Jai, Sri Sri, Gornitai, Ki Jai. She was walking across the street and this car was coming and it was coming pretty fast. So she didn't see the car and the car didn't, didn't see her at the last minute and the car hit her. It was going about 40 miles an hour, quite fast. And so it hit her and it knocked her flying in the air. She went up in the air after being hit by the car. She flew across the road and landed onto this area where there was some grass on the side. And she was unconscious. People came, finally they took her to the hospital. She was still unconscious. They weren't sure whether she was going to be back to consciousness or not because she, she was alive, but obviously quite badly hurt. So the doctor calls in the nurses, says take x-rays of her body and find out where are the broken bones, then we can know what to do. So they took, uh, took x-rays and then the nurses came back with the x-rays and the doctor and gave it to the doctor and the doctor said, well, these are not the x-rays of the girl, give me the x-rays of the girl. And the doc, the nurses said, no, these are, these are the x-rays. He says, it can't be, it's not possible. There's nothing wrong. There's not a, not a slight bit of broken bone anywhere in her whole body. But she had two marks two marks here and two marks here on her, just below the shoulder right here, scratches, exact same. And that was the only mark on her whole body. Finally, she came back to consciousness after a while. She told, when I was hit, Lord Nishringadev caught me, but because he has nails, he scratched me <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> And so she actually saw, or actually experienced, Lord Nusringadev catching her after she got hit by that car. And obviously, he protected her from being, de being uh, hurt when she got hit by the car. So this is Lord Nusringadev. He's very kind to his devotees. Um, I'm trying to think of all the stories I know about Lord Nusringadev. There's, there's like hundreds of them, you know. <laughs> there's one devotee, and you know, the Mayapur Nusringadev, that uh, Ugra Nusringa in Mayapur. It's a very special Nusringadev. self man It was carved, but it was a very powerful, powerful deity. We got that Nusringadev because the... Uh, when we first got to Mayapur, there were gundas who were attacking our, our temple. So the devotees decided to get this deity of Lord Nisringadev. So they sent one senior Prabhupada devotee. His name was Atma, Atmarama. And he went and after many months, he found someone to carve this Lord Nisringadev. So he was there in Mayapur. So one day, when Pujari, who was worshipping Lord Nisringadev, after he finished, he went to sleep. He was, he was a brahmachari. Because it says, for Ugra, Ugra Nisringadev, you can only, only sannyasis and brahmacharis cannot worship uh, Ugra Nisringa. They can worship Lakshmi Nisringa, Grihastas can worship Grahasmi Nisringa, but they can't worship Ugra Nisringa. If they do, their, their married life will be destroyed, finished. <laughs> and I know of at least two or three examples of this happening. 
and, and within the two weeks of one time, I think it was in the year 2006, I received two deities of Ugar Nisringa given to me by Grihastas and said, he's making a mess of my marriage here. <laughs> you take him. So I received two different deities of Ugar Nisringa within a two-week period. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so they were small deities, but they were Ugar. Um, so, yeah, so this Pujari, now he's sleeping and is coming to the early morning hours. And so all of a sudden he feels his, it's like he's sleeping in his bunk bed and he's on the top and the other dev devotees on the bottom. So the bed is shaking. So he's thinking it must be the devotee sleeping down. So, and the bed keeps shaking and shaking. Finally, he wakes up and he looks up and there's Lord Nishringadev sitting on the edge of his bed. The same deity he's worshiping. And the Lord looks at him. He says, stop shining that light in my eyes. Every time you wake me up, you put that light in my eyes. Stop it. <laughs> So the devotees sitting there listening to Lord Nishringa chastise him. <laughs> you can ask Pankajangri, he tells this story because <laughs> he heard it from this devotee. The devotee was just shocked. <laughs> there he is listening to Lord Nishringa Dave chastising him. He's there in person. And then the Lord disappears. The devotee gets all excited. He jumps out of his bed and starts running into the temple. But he forgets, he forgets to put his dhoti on because <laughs> he's so, you know, shocked about what happened. He's running around in his copans and he's in the temple. <laughs> and there's still, there's devotees there chanting japa because in my where everybody gets up early and chants like one or two o'clock, they're in the temple. <laughs> so he's running around. Everybody's looking at him. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Finally, he realized that he needed to get dressed, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so the Lord is very personal. <laughs> of course, after that, they don't shine. You know, when they wake him up, they make sure that the light doesn't go on his eyes. <laughs> Lord Nisringadev is pretty particular. If you worship Nisringadev, you have to be really, really conscious. Because if you make a mistake, you'll you'll know it. <laughs> you'll know it. He'll let you know some way or other like that. And you have to be very careful when worshiping Lord Nisringadev. Even Prahlad Nisringadev or, or Lakshmi Nisringadev still. Now, there's so many stories, yeah. Uh, I could tell dozens of stories of devotees having personal experiences of Lord Nishringadev. There's a story in Germany. This was in this uh, one place in Germany. It was kind of like a, uh, a place where they have all bars and prostitutes' houses and places like that. So devotees were doing Harinam Sankirtan many years ago. I heard this from the devotee who was there. He told this story. And so they were doing Harinam in this place. And then all of a sudden they turned the corner and they saw this gang of motorcycle guys, you know, these really heavy duty guys with leather jackets and chains. And so they saw the devotees doing Harinam. So they start yelling and screaming at them. And then they were, they were throwing bottles of beer at the devotees and cans of beer and cursing them. So the devotee who was in charge of the kirtan, this is the one who told me, he said, I just told the devotees, let's just chant Nishringadev prayers. So they started chanting Nishringadev prayers. Some devotees left to get away, but most devotees stayed and they were chanting Nishringadev prayers. At one point, one of the motorcycle guys decided to come and attack the devotees. So he started crossing the street. And while he was crossing the street, a car was coming. 
in the car, looked out the window and saw the devotees and started to wave the driver. And then he forgot to look where he was going. That was the end of that guy. <laughs> so the guy who came to attack the devotees, he got smashed by the car. <laughs> he did some good service. <laughs> Another time in the same place in Germany, I forgot the name of this place. It starts with an R. It's a very risque place. I think it's somewhere in the Hamburg area of Germany. Hmm? Yeah. It's rare. And so devotees were doing Harinam there. And this big monster guy, he's coming at the devotees and he's yelling, he's screaming. And he's just screaming, screaming, he's coming, and he's like, big guy. So the devotees just started to chant the Shringadev prayers. And the guy was getting closer. At one point, he got at one point he got close to the devotees, and something happens. His body went up in the air, turns like this, and fell flat, straight on the ground. Boom. Finished. Nobody touched him. <laughs> he just went, whoop, boom. And then, the, you know, the ambulance came. They said, well, he had a heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> he did. Lord Nishringadev turned off the heart. Choo! <laughs> so... Hari Bol, Sri Nishringa Bhagavan Ki. Devotees like when demons get killed. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, there's so many stories. South Africa, when the devotees were attacked in their house, a whole gang of eight guys came into the house to to rob the house. And one man just started chanting Nishringa Dev loudly as possible. And the thieves just turned around, got bewildered, and left. Yeah. So there's so many examples of how, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of stories. You could practically ask every devotee. And the Shingadeva is protecting our movement so nicely. He's protecting, he's keeping this movement free from, I mean, we, once in a while we do get attacks and there's some, some loss, but Lord Nishringadeva is really, really protecting this movement. And so he is the protector of dangers. Like that. So by worshiping Lord Nishringadeva and praying to Lord Nishringadeva, this is the second thing he does. He protects against material dangers. Mm -hmm. Protects against material dangers. And the third thing he does is he protects against material illusions. This is also very good for brahmacharis, especially. Sometimes we look at the material energy and we see something that looks enjoyable. And we think, oh, I want to enjoy that. Maybe it's the opposite sex or something. Some, something, some image that comes to our mind and reminds us of enjoyment. But by worshiping the Lord Nishringadev, he will give you the knowledge that what you're seeing is not enjoyable. <laughs> it's simply an illusion. In other words, he, he dispels the illusions that can come upon a devotee who comes in contact with material sense objects like that. So these are the three things that the Lord Nishringadev does. He uproots fruit of activities, protects against material dangers, and destroys material illusions. Now this is mentioned in one prayer by Srila uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who he writes in glorification of Lord Nishringadev. Mm -hmm. So Lord Nishringadev is our worshipable object. Prabhupada said Lord Nishringadev appeared in order to tell the atheists that God does exist. <laughs> he comes in the form of death for the atheist. The atheists don't believe in the Lord, and they have so many ideas, but the Lord comes in the form of death just to convince the atheist that there is God. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Um, tonight we'll talk about how the Lord appeared and what preceded his appearance, because tonight is the time of his appearance in the dust time, and we'll speak a, again like that. So there's so much we can learn from this wonderful pastime, but the most important thing is to learn is that Nishringadev is our worshipful deity. When first, when Srila Prabhupada first brought uh, Krishna consciousness to the Western world, he didn't in, introduce the Nishringa mantras. But then the devotees got attacked in one place and Prabhupada said, now I will teach you a new chant which we should be singing at the end of every Mongol, at, at the end of every arti. And then he, of course, went on to mention that prayer, Namaste, Narasimhaya, Paladala, Dandayane, Hiranyakasipu, Yakshahan, Hiranyakasipu, Tilakan, Kanlaye, Ito Nishingha, Narato Nishingho, Yato Yato Yamita To Nishingho, by here Nishingho, Rida He Shingho, Nishing Hamadin Saranam Prabhupadye. Dhavakara Kamala Bharena Kamad Bhutta Sringam Dalitali Ranya Kashi Putanu Bringam Kesavadri Tahadi Rupa Jayan Jagadi Sahade Jai Jagadi Sahade Jai Jagadi Sahade so in that prayer, he's called Abhuta. Abhuta means wonderful. And Lord Nishringadeva is wonderful. One of my, the sons of one of my god brothers, named, his name is Druva. He travels all around the, India looking for temples of Lord Nishringadeva. And he has published one volume of big, big, it's a big, big book of pictures of the place and the deity of Lord Nisringadev that he's found in his most remote places in the world, like that. Nisringadev is everywhere. You can find him not only in India, but in other places of the world. The Lord is there in different manifestations of his forms. When I was in a place called Satara, just outside of Satara, the devotees took me to this one Nisringadev temple. And we went, they welcomed us, they asked me to speak, I spoke on Lord Nishringadev. They were all inspired. And then we took darshan of the deity. Now to get to the deity, it's not easy. You have to go down this tunnel, and it goes, it's a winding tunnel that comes all the way through the earth. And finally it comes out to this little tiny room. And in the room, there's a self-manifesting deity of Lord Nishringadev. It's a Shila. It's made out of that black rock. It was found by one, I think it was Gotama Muni, uh, under the water. And he found this deity and brought it, and then later it was installed in his temple. <clears throat> and it's a beautiful deity, and it has the Das avatars on the back of it. Like, because Nisringadev is also glorified as one of the Das avatars by Jayadev Goswami. And so on this Shila, you'll see the different forms of the Lord in his different incarnations. And then he's tearing across Radhikashi Pu. And for those people who can't go down to see Nisringadev going through the tunnel because of whatever reason, they have a little box at the top of the temple in the main area, and you can put some coin in it, and it goes, comes all the way down and falls right at the feet of the Lord. <laughs> so you can offer a donation without even going down. It's a really amazing temple. We spent a lot of time there. We chanted rounds there, and we, we interacted with the local people. It's a wonderful temple, and so many, so many wonderful temples in in uh, in India of Lord Nishringadev, especially in South India. There's hundreds of Nishringadev temples. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went traveling to South India, he found so many temples of Lord Nishringadev. He worshipped the Lord. He visited the Lord. 
he offered beautiful prayers to the Lord. And uh, that was all part of his tour in South India. He went to dozens of the Shringadev temples. So, uh, yeah. And so this prayer that we chanted today, which is the Bhagavatam verse, is a very uh, very important prayer devotees should pray to Lord Nishringadev. We can use many prayers, but this is one of the one of the more prominent prayers uh, created by Pallad Maharaj himself. And we'll speak a little bit later on about the glories of Pallad Maharaj and how he was fearless despite the fact that his father, Harani Kashipu, was trying to kill him in so many ways. He could remain completely unaffected and never felt even the slightest bit of fear. He was always remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. He was remembering Krishna. Prahlad was a devotee of Krishna. But the Lord appeared in this most amazing form as Lord Nishringadev. And of course, the appearance of Lord Nishringadev in the world is a wonderful story also. How he appears. Hmm. So we'll stop there and see, because I know your devotees have things to do today. So tonight we'll have another class for about 45 minutes, starting at 7 o'clock. Yeah. 6.30 there is a Abhishek of the Lord, like that. And then after, and then, then there's a little kirtan from 7.45 to 8 o'clock. And then uh, some Kadasi Prashad. Okay. Any questions, comments, anything about Lord Nishringadev? Anybody have any personal stories they'd like to tell? <laughs> yes. Um, I, um, a little closer. Uh, there is a story from devotees from Split. Uh, one devotee, uh, Amataji, uh, she told me this story, and it's her personal experience. Um, she was um, uh, in the, how do you say, um, she, she, was, she wasn't driving a car, but she was driving shotgun. I don't know how to translate. Uh, yeah, it's passenger seat. Passenger seat, yes. And uh, shotgun is uh, that's the uh, uh, USA vernacular. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, uh, it's the passenger seat in front next to the driver's. Yeah, seat. that's called shotgun. Yes, <laughs> and uh, sh uh, another Mataji was uh, driving the car, and they were on a highway or a fast road. And uh, after some junction, they um, accidentally they were. In I guess they weren't paying much attention. They um, drove into the wrong lane, the wrong direction they were, they were heading. And um, suddenly there was this truck going in the opposite direction, about to run, run, the, run them over. And the driver, uh, she, uh, out of fear, she froze and she lifted up her hands like in, in, out of fear. And the Mataji in the passenger seat, she just took the wheel uh yell at the top of her lungs Nrisimha pulled the pulled the wheel and the car went flying it uh, tumbled over three times and b before it it stopped tumbling the the paramedics were there everybody the police the fire uh, the fire uh how do they say fire um yeah. firefighters were there and uh they went out without a scratch mm -hmm. They, uh, the, when the paramedics came, they um, uh, they dragged them in, they, they pulled them out of the, the wreck, and uh, they were astonished like, how is this possible? There, there, there is not a scratch on them. Yeah, it's the Lord is, He doesn't just say He protects, He does. <laughs> it's not some theory, it's He does protect the devotees, and there's a whole series of stories that were written in a book. I have the book by uh, Pankajangri of all the different stories of Nishringadev in Mayapur. So many. Nishringadev is so reciprocal 
just like uh, well, there was one lady. She came to New, to uh, to Mayapur, and then she was, you know, taking darshan. She was quite new, so she went up and uh, she was looking at Nishringadev, and she was feeling really, really attracted to Lord Nishringadev. So she prayed, "My dear Lord, I would really like to do some service." And then after she prayed, and then she left, and she was walking away. As soon as she started walking away, Pankajangri came up to her and said, you know, I have some service for you. Would you like to do some service? <laughs> she was thinking, he's asking me for service? Oh, I just prayed for that. <laughs> because she wasn't even a regular temple devotee. She was just somebody who had come in as a guest. <laughs> Yeah, so the Lord is very reciprocal <laughs> like that. He's very merciful like that. So we say we worship Lord Nishringadev in the mood of parental affection. He's like our father. <laughs> like that. Gives complete protection. And of course, you know, there's so many stories how he protects the Sankirtan movement when attacked by demons. Nice story. Thank you. Yeah. You have another one? There is uh, one of my personal, um, how I felt uh, Lord Nishtina that reciprocate. I, it was last year uh, around May, at the end of May, begin, beginning of Ju July. Um, I, I felt some, um, you know, extra attraction for Lord Narasimhadev, especially Stan Ugra Narasimhadev in Mayapur. And I, I um, downloaded a couple of pictures because they, they have daily darshan and on, on the internet they post it. And um, I printed it and framed it and, and I was, uh, there, there was some extra meditation on the mercy of Lord Narasimhadev and I was also reading some prayers and uh, in a week or so um, I went to Ljubljana and uh, there was a holy name festival and there I met a devotee who um, I, I was uh, there also I was uh, having some how to say extra meditation on Lord Nasimhadev I was contemplating his pastimes and a devotee came up to me in Ljubljana who I've never met before and he he just told me, oh here, here's some uh, Mahaprasada from Ugra Nirsimhadev in Mayapur. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, just... you believe in magic. <laughs> <laughs> nice, thank you. My sister, she's an initiated Prabhupada disciple also. And uh, she was doing Sankirtan with the devotees in Nuvrindavan many years ago. <clears throat> And so they were going into this one shopping mall. And my sister was like the last person in, in the line to go in. But before she got in, she told me this story recently that uh, Lord Nishringadev appeared to her and he said, she, he said, don't go in. So all the devotees went in and she was the last one. So she turned around and didn't go in. And all the devotees got arrested. <laughs> And she, she, she didn't get arrested. <laughs> he said, he appeared in, in, in my mind and he spoke to me, don't go in. <laughs> so I didn't go in. <laughs> yeah. My, this, my sister, she, you can pray for her. She needs some prayers, but she's really, she doesn't have much attraction for any of the deities except Nishringadev. That's all she thinks about is Nishringadev. She's in Nishringabhakta. Yeah, there's so many. Okay, you had something you wanted to say? You had a question? I was in Simhachalam two years ago, 
um, I, I started a couple months before that, I started to become serious with Krishna consciousness. And I was so attached to a rabbit I, I, I got. And I, I kept the rabbit outside. And while I was doing service in the kitchen, somehow the rabbit disappeared. I don't know what happened till today. I don't know what happened to the, to the rabbit. And I was long, long time. I was very, very disappointed because everyone um, uh, promises protection and good benedictions from Narasim Hadev. But then uh, many, many times when this came up in my mind, a lot of uh, lesson, uh, the, the ones who gave the lesson was talking about this uh, this example with um, with a man with a deer who became a deer. Right. And then I was like, oh, my God, I wouldn't become a deer. I love this animal so much. It wasn't fair. Yeah, that... you would be a rabbit right now. <laughs> I think I would. I love this rabbit really, really we much. Be you, I... We would be giving you carrots right now instead of Prashad. Yeah. <laughs> so... It was hard to overcome that. But, <laughs> yeah, I hear that story yeah, yeah. always again. That's the reason you got the mercy because you were, you know, heading towards that birth. <laughs> so the Lord... Made him a little arrangement for you to stay in a human body, <laughs> at least in this life, anyway. Yeah, you have to be careful what you get attached to. We can we can be kind towards living entities, but if we develop an attachment for it, then that can, can cause us to, uh, you know, lose our attachment for Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to Bart Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Nice example. All right. Maybe someday your rabbit will come back <laughs> when you're not attached anymore. <laughs> okay. So we can maybe uh, stop here. We'll continue. I mean, there's so much we can speak about, about Lord Nishringadev. I have a nice slideshow. It's really nice. It's all the deities of Lord Nishringadev from around the world. I don't know if we have time to show that, though. If you think of anything, some opportunity where you can show it, maybe we can even show it tomorrow or something, if there's no time today. It's a very beautiful slideshow of deities all around the world. Sunday? Yeah, okay, a few days. Yeah, that would be good, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's about... Maybe 35 minutes long, 40 minutes long. It's all many, many beautiful deities. Also, artistic drawings of Narada Nisringadev done by many, many wonderful artists. So, it's a, it's a meditation, just slow on the different forms, different manifestations of the forms of Nisringadev. Okay, thank you very much. Shri Nishinga Bhagavan Ki, Balad Maharaj Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Pibhanande Hari 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 Bhagavan.